joined, I'm joined now by Conservative MP for Litchfield, Michael Fabricant. Michael, good to talk to you. Bit of a good triple to talk blow. To you, Nana. Do you consider this a triple blow for the Tories? They lost two seats and then Oliver Dowden resigns. What do you think? Are you worried? Well, I've been doing some number crunching and I've actually been doing a bit of hard work. And the figures behind all the elections are actually very, very revealing. If I can just take Wakefield and then I'll take Honiton and Tiverton, it shows, both of them show, that there hasn't been switching. Normally you get switching from Conservative voters to Labour or Lib Dem. This didn't happen in either election. In Wakefield, Labour actually lost support. They went down from 28% of the vote to 20%. Now, the Conservatives just stayed at home and that's one of the reasons why they won why labor won wakefield although their majority uh, actually uh, went down their majority went down from 10174 when they last won it in 2017 and is now only well it's under 5000 and honiton and tiverton is also very interesting the lib dems went up by four points but only four points from 25% to 29% but again, 20,000 Conservatives didn't switch, but they stayed at home. And this, of course, is a big worry. And one of the things we're going to have to sort out is precisely why they did stay at home. Was it because of the industrial disputes? Was it because of uh, the um, COVID and all the rest of it? Or was it because of Boris Johnson? And uh, at the moment, the evidence is it wasn't because of Boris Johnson and Partygate was not a major issue. I was going to say as well, both um, the Conservative MPs who lost their seats, lost them under, well, shall we say, interesting situations. I mean, there was Neil Paris who oh, resigned after... Difficult circumstances, well, of course. I mean, both involved in sleaze. Uh, yeah. One was prosecuted... Uh, as we know in Wakefield, uh, regarding a young boy, and uh, the, the the MP for Honiton and Tiverton, of course, had been looking at porn in the chamber, which uh, was also most unfortunate. So there were local circumstances too. Mm. So I say, because it does seem like people are just laying the blame straight at Boris Johnson, but actually nobody's mentioning the circumstances with which those MPs actually had to uh, resign and uh, those circumstances are, don't help the Conservative Party. And I could understand why, if you voted for your MP and he represents the Conservative Party and that happened, you wouldn't really feel like voting Conservative again, potentially. So it's not all Boris's fault. How do you feel about Oliver Dowden then? He, he's resigned. Yes, I think it's unfortunate that he's resigned. I think there are many reasons why he may have left the party. or well, not the party, I should say, but as party chairman. Uh, he's made that personal choice. Maybe in uh, weeks to come, I'll speculate precisely why he decided to go. Um, but he's gone, and uh, I guess he decided that he's the one to take and carry the can. But you know what? I don't actually think he need feel too ashamed. I think the party organisation went well. It's just that Conservative voters stayed at home. As I said, it wasn't... Uh, it's, you know, the economy, it's tough times. I mean, Macron, for example, although he's scraped in as president, he's, uh, his parliamentary elections means he no longer has control in the, uh, in the, in the Assemblée Nationale. Um, yeah, so it, it's tricky times. But we've got to remember it's midterm, two and a half mm. years into a Conservative government. And unlike other elections, this one, we didn't see people crossing across to Labour. If I was Keir Starmer, I'd be very, very worried indeed. And in fact, one election I do remember very much where there was a 21% swing to Labour was mid Staffordshire, which was the name of my old Litchfield seat. And uh, a Labour MP was elected after a 21% swing to Labour in a by-election. Two years later, I got elected. I won it back. Well, I'm going to ask you now, because a lot of people would say that actually these are the worst by-election results in history. Um, do you think Boris Johnson can keep the keys to number 10? I think he will. I don't think, I think this was built in, you know, in a way, the fact that I think most Conservative MPs would have been very pleasantly surprised if Timberton had actually been retained by the Conservatives. And my gosh, if we'd actually won Wakefield, I think we'd have had a collective nervous breakdown out of sheer pleasure. 
But uh, I don't think this is actually a crucial time for Boris Johnson. Where there will be a problem is when the Privileges Committee gives a report back in uh, September, October, November this year, uh, and that will be all about, as we know, whether or not he knowingly lied to the House of Commons. I don't think he did, but we shall see. That is actually the testing point, not this, not this by-election. Right. right. Well, I suppose it's midterm. We don't expect great results, for the, especially for the party in power. But what about um, Keir Starmer? If we look to him, he said today's results indicate that the British public want a change. That's his view. Do, do you think then... Well, the, the truth of the matter is he knows full well that the British public don't want to change because both by-elections, both the one in Wakefield and the one in Honiton, even though there was a Lib Lab pact where the Liberals didn't campaign in Wakefield and Labour didn't campaign in Honiton, despite all of that, there wasn't any switching virtually at all from the Conservatives to Labour or Conservatives to the Lib Dems. And for the Labour vote to actually fall from 28% to 20% is quite something. Labour at the moment only enjoy a lead of about 3 or 4% nationally. This is no way he's going to win the election. Uh, don't forget the, the time of Tony Blair, uh, when just before the 1997 election, when there was the huge swing to Labour, he was uh, 24 to 30 points ahead in the polls. Labour is nowhere near this. So Keir Starmer is kidding himself. And of course, it'll be interesting to see exactly what Durham Constabulary are going to do regarding the famous Beergate incident. We haven't heard from them because they sent out a questionnaire to uh, Keir Starmer, who left it to the very last minute to reply, just in case he was prosecuted before the by-election. But well, that's well, yet to come. Well, yes, that is yet to come. And of course, it has got on. Maybe the change is actually him, Keir Starmer. Listen, Michael, it's really good to talk to you. That's Michael Powell, MP, the Conservative.